Hey everybody, I'm Amanda Day and it is the last day of the 2019 Twin Cities Film Fest and I am here with Genevieve Rudinay and she is the director of The Chunta which is an incredibly important film and we are so happy that it's here at the Twin Cities Film Fest. First of all, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, it's wonderful to be here. I'm from the Twin Cities and it's so nice to be home for the weekend to screen this film here for the first time. So tell us a little bit about the film for people who don't know anything about it. Tell us a little bit about the premise. Sure. Uh, the Chunta is a documentary feature film about the story of a gang of queer dancers in Mexico who are fighting to be part of a tradition in their small town um, and the conflicts between two groups of dancers one that is very traditionalist and one that is um, LGBTQ friendly and ironically they both cross-dress, they both transform from men into women um, as part of this tradition that's been going on for hundreds of years. So it's kind of a RuPaul's Drag Race meets <laughs> National Geographic situation. That is such a fantastic dis description, I love that. So. I think the idea of sexuality and the idea of gender is such an important topic and we're finally really having open conversations about it. And like when you think about the bullfighter, that is a hyper masculine um, role, but it's like pink and satin and bows and everything. And I think the idea of playing around with masculinity and femininity, uh, just like femin true feminism, is if that means to you you're a stay-at-home mom and to me it means running you know a huge company that's what those choices mean yeah. and so talk a little bit about uh, first of all being queer in a small town especially in Mexico with a lot of religious influences mm -hmm. what were some of the things that you discovered as you as you made this film um, oh, that's, a, that's a lot uh, so <laughs> Um, so I'm queer and I grew up in Minneapolis, or in St. Paul, and growing up here, it w I was, had a very accepting family, a very accepting community, but we still faced discrimination. I remember um, f facing discrimination at school, facing discrimination um, in the community, and when I moved to Mexico, I was in my 20s, and I was looking for that community as well, looking for um, people I could connect with. Yeah. And I met a bunch of dancers who are part of this wonderful tradition. And it seemed like, wow, everyone's cross-dressing and playing with gender. This is like an oasis. And then I realized that a lot of the people who were cross-dressing and participating in the tradition were very homophobic and transphobic. So that's when I thought, I have to understand this more because it, it's so strange to see someone in a full gown and full makeup saying, we don't want any gangs in our dancing troupe. Um, and then the gay community who is participating is facing discrimination in that tradition which is um was just fascinating to me and why i decided to make the film yeah so where did this tradition start because it seems like a fairly unusual thing and yet you look at a lot of cultures mm -hmm. and theater has had many men mm -hmm. cross-dressing for thousands of years yeah. Um, so the tradition takes place in a town called Chiapa de Corso in Chiapas, Mexico, which is on the southern border of Mexico near Guatemala. It's been going on for hundreds of years, and one of the kind of mysteries in the film is that everyone has a different version of how it started, so no one really knows <laughs> when or where or how. Um, there are many legends surrounding it, um, kind of like our Paul Bunyan, they have their own version of that, okay. but it doesn't really answer the question how it started. Um, in the film, one of the versions of a local historian that I think is really interesting um, is that the tradition takes place around their New Year's and there's a gap between the end of the old year and the beginning of the new year and in that gap everything has to be upside down and all the rules are broken and so the dancing figure kind of represents by breaking gender norms and cross-dressing they represent that time in the year when it's okay to sort of let loose and be free and and break some rules. That's so fascinating so how long do, were you in Mexico? Do you still live there? Uh, I don't live there anymore I was living there for eight and a half years um, and I was working on the film for about four. Four years. That's a journey of love. That's a long time, right? So when you first decided this story has to be told, how did you go about um, deciding like the people you were going to have and, and invite them to be a part of the film? How did you go about like creating the opportunity to make this film? Mm -hmm. Um, I was really lucky because I was part of an incredible filmmaking community of, of filmmakers in Chiapas. Um, there are a lot of young indigenous filmmakers local to Chiapas who are making incredible films um, and we were studying together. It's kind of a um, 
it's farther away from the central filmmaking industry in Mexico, just concentrated in the capital, in Mexico City. And so we sort of taught each other, supported each other's films, and thanks to them I really learned a lot about how to use a camera, how to edit, um, and how to build relationships with the subjects. So I was friends first with some of the folks in the film, and then as I got to know people and build trust, they invited me, oh, you have to talk to this person, or you have to try uh, this person's homemade pork dinner, and then once we're eating, we start talking. And so there was a lot of relationship building. Um, for a couple years before the film actually started shooting. And where do you live now? I live in Portland, Oregon. Okay, so Portland, Oregon tends to be a place that really nurtures, let's say, non-boring people, non-traditional, you know, not everyone has to be in a little box. So talk about um, where this film's gonna live from here out, and then I, I would love to hear your perspective on being a, a woman director and some of the crap you've had to deal with. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, so the film is in festivals right now. It's been in festivals for the last couple years. We've screened in five continents at over uh, 20 festivals. So it's, it's been really fun, really wonderful. Um, and now I'm looking to connect with distributors um, and uh, hopefully be able to reach audiences through some streaming platforms. So that uh, will be coming up. I'm also interested in connecting with um, educational institutions. Tomorrow night we have a screening at Carleton, um, which is kind of kicking off our educational screenings. So it'll have a uh, community and educational life before um, connecting with some distributors. And yeah, to talk about being a, f a female filmmaker and director, I think it is very challenging in Portland, I've been really lucky because I'm part of a group called Film Fatales, which is an international network of um, women feature film directors, and our local chapter has been a huge source of support to me in problem solving, in promoting the film, in supporting each other's work. So I feel like from beginning to end, from before I started making the film, when I was in Chiapas and received all the support of filmmakers there, to now when I'm distrib in distribution, um, being part of a a strong collective community is really key. And How can we get involved with that organization? Um, it's called filmfatales.org. It's a nonprofit. It's wonderful. You can support it, um, follow it. Yeah. And I think for folks in the industry, um, they have a directory of film, female filmmakers and non-binary filmmakers online. Um, so hire female filmmakers, hire non-binary filmmakers. Uh, we have the experience and, yeah. and we're ready to go. Yeah. Yeah. What's your next project? Um, right now I'm in development on a feature script for a documentary film about a Minnesota native um, named Don Peterson, who was a transgender punk rock paleontologist who so transitioned in the 1990s. Um, and it's a story of her life and kind of a road trip saga of how she found herself and um, survived um, addiction, mental health struggles, and, and living as an out trans lesbian in the 1990s. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you better bring that movie here, because we want that, well, maybe in two years? Yeah, it'll be, it'll be it'll a few be years. A okay. Thank you so much you. for being here. We at the Twin Cities Film Fest are so excited to be able to just give a platform to tell stories that haven't been told before. And they're so vital to building a community that um, seeks to understand maybe someone's not exactly like you. Cool, that's more interesting. And we, yeah, we're just so happy that you're here. Thank you very much for thank being you. here. Yeah. All right, for the Ballard Spa Red Carpet, thanks you guys. It is the last day of the Twin Cities Film Fest. If you aren't already here, get here.